What's going on, YouTube? Medically Fit coming at you live. Today, we have a new topic. Talking about types of pest control. Uh, that as a home cultivator, grower, ones we're really looking to use and utilize the most. Because um, there's some products out there. Some people just want to kind of know which ones work the best. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to get into those topics. We start off like we always do, people. Uh, let's smoke and get ready. Cheers. Seven ten Kennesaw Theodore, what's going on? So <coughs> a lot of people right now are starting to deal with different pests. Gnats, thrips, worms, um, caterpillars. So some of the different products that I found that nice fast delivery because like I've talked about bringing in plants from nurseries or gardens Billy Martin how you doing it's kind of concerning because you actually bring in whatever pest that they are dealing with such as root knot nematodes different types of thrips different types of spider mites or mites because if these gardens or nurseries that you're getting some of your um, different companion plants or different plants from and you bring house plants, uh, another great example. By the way, PNW. Slugs for you. A, they, Midwest, you can get them too. Just depends. But when you're bringing them into your gardens, uh, you know, we're supposed to always kind of put them to the side, kind of put them in a containment area so they don't spread. And I've always kind of had an area that I did that, but I thought my containment area worked until I started finding signs of thrips. And I was already treating for thrips, um, using a couple different things. But I think that... Um, I'm going to have to re-amend and inoculate for them. I'm not signing, finding many like actual thrips themselves. Uh, I've only found one or two here and there. Um, red pill, what's going on? But I'm seeing signs on a, a couple plants, so I've actually ordered some things to deal with them. Um, they actually helped me get rid of my gnats as well. Because uh, I know a lot of people when I buy certain bag soil just to do like small gallon, one gallon pots when I'm transplanting uh, clones into pots, I'll usually grab just a quick bag soil and I'll get some gnats dealing with it. And so uh, a lot of times I used to try to use my integrated pest management to knock gnats down and the uh, Bavaria bassiana and... Those are great, you know, Bavaria bassiana is supposed to be found and naturally occurring in soil anyhow, and it's a fungus that actually will attack certain mites and uh, different pests, um, but some, it didn't seem like it worked so well. So what I found was actually using different nematode combinations uh, that really helped knock down my gnat issues. Worm casting BB seemed to work well. Yeah, so I've ordered, there's two types of, so there's a, what do we say? 25,000 different species of nematodes. And we're trying to limit it down to just a couple because there's beneficial and then there's predator. And then you have root feeding. And so... Some of what we're looking for nematode-wise are like um, 
SF, which are um, Fertilla um, Strain Stein Steinera Fertilla. Um, here it is. S T E I N E R N E M A F T L E I A E. Um, the SF nematodes. Uh, those are the ones that work really well for fungus gnats and thrips. So I'm using them. I, I actually received them today. Uh, we're going to water them in. But before I was just watering the no-till bed. And this time I'm going to water all the plants. Because I'm pretty sure that uh, some of the plants that I had in a containment unit, I didn't get treated well enough and moved them to the no-till bed and when they were clones, so I might have transferred them in that way, but uh, the other thing I have coming are more uh, predator mites that actually will attack gnats and thrips, but so the SF, um, they do a lot. Um, let's see, I'm going back to the actual page, um, and finding, hang on. So, as a home cultivator grower, and we're dealing with pests, and we don't want to do a lot of IPM sprays. Traveling Troy, what's going on? Long time. Cam, the can of man, how you doing? Got spider mites for the first time, so yeah, that's fun. Any tips? Yeah. So, right here, we're going to go into that with different types of nematode of predator mites to fight your mites in the soil and on the plant. Um, so, the SF uh, Fritillae, uh, they go after fungus snaps, ticks, thrips, leaf miners, caterpillars, cut worms, sod web worms, onion maggots, and subterranean termites and more. So most of the time we're dealing with gnats, thrips, leaf miners, caterpillars in our grows, uh, either outdoor or indoor. Some of them are slugs, just depending. But looking at uh, nematodes as one way to start attacking them in the soil, because what the nematode will do is once they find the larvae They'll go attack it, and what they do is they release a bacteria, an enzyme a type of bacteria that goes into the bloodstream and kind of starts killing them off. And so it's pretty interesting how nematodes use a bacteria to kill some of these pests and predator, or these pest bugs off. Um, if you look at like Bavaria bassiana, it's actually a drain a species of fungus, fungi, that actually will attack and start to grow and kill and kind of any other bugs that come in contact with it, it does the same thing. It's pretty interesting if you've looked at pictures of them. Smiley's Garden, what's going on? Yeah, talking about your root knot nematodes that you're dealing with, how I'm kind of dealing with some thrips right now and uh, Got my package of my SF nematodes, and I know you said you ordered the triple threat. Uh, so we're kind of discussing, you know, some of the things about nematodes and what they do. And so SF is one of them that I've always kind of recommended. They See, people kind of have concerns whether or not nematodes will actually harm, like, aquatic birds or reptiles and stuff. They don't. Um, we probably have nematodes if you've eaten dirt and you've been in a healthy ecosystem and you actually, you know, t you might have taken in some nematodes at one point in time. So you might have some. They're not like tapeworms. Um, ch -ch -ch. The other type of nematode that I've always kind of looked at and tried to work with um, is the HB. And that's the Heteros habidesis back Bacteriophora, yeah, yeah. Hey, don't hold me to that because uh -uh, I'm not good at pronunciations. Not at all. But these include like fighting different grubs, 
uh, root zone weevils, citrus weevils, beetles, um, ticks, ants, termites, uh, and some of the areas that I'm in, um, they kind of seem to deal with uh, moss, caterpillars, uh, queen ants, uh, what are some of the other ones? Fleas, flies, um, different, a lot of different types of weevils and borers on the HB. Um, but those are the two that I've kind of used quite a bit of and found a lot of uh, benefits from them. Josh Caldwell, what's going on? Smoking plants, outdoor. I deal with caterpillars, but it used be, yeah. Uh, look at the SF nematodes, because um, those really work well on caterpillars. I'm going trying to read a little bit more. Um, so I ordered a, I believe a 10 million species. This time, last time was 5,000. It treats like 13 to 1,600 square feet, which is like the size of most people's houses. Um, the 10 million quantity I got this time treats a 3,200 square foot area. So I'm really going to treat most of my pots and my other house plants. So if I have anything hiding in any of these other um Josh Colbert, what's going on? I'm going to even probably mix some of it in some of the soils that I have sitting around just in case I have gnats um, that are in there. Because, so nematodes do what they call like a suspended animation. They don't really die off like bacteria and fungus. They don't really die off. They kind of do a suspended animation that sometimes the spores are there they just need rehydrated and that's kind of what brings the animation back to life um if you have applied them already can they die off well if there's not enough food for them in the system then possibly um but that's why i'm going to try to re-inoculate even the no-till bed just putting some more in there just in case i did run into that issue where uh I started running low on these uh, nematodes, um, but five million, I think keeping my bed moist, because that's the thing. You have to keep the soil moist for almost two weeks so, that, so everything can really get up and going. Um, so that's where people, oh, you're overwatering. Well, no, there's a difference between overwatering where I can squeeze my soil and water's coming out and moist soil where it's like cake, which there's not really much moisture to it, but it's still kind of spongy and I can feel a little bit of moisture on my finger squeezing it. Use a well-bounced solution, Don do so vinegar, pesticide. Yeah, see, but I'm trying to get away from using a lot of different IPMs and going more natural pest predator, um, mimicking mother nature the best I can. And so, Looking at nematodes to fight everything that are, is in the soil, um, that's what I'm looking to do. Now, some of the other things that I've ordered were different types of predator mites. Um, where'd they go? I have ordered um, the Swirskis. Uh, these Swirskis. Uh, where is the answer? Here we go. Um, are an ex excellent benefit mite for preventing control of thrips, white flies, and other mite species. Um, they actually do work well with, on. Uh, gnats as well because this is what I've used uh, between besides the nematodes when I was having a fungus gnat issue at first uh, when I first got the bed up and going and once I started using the Swirskis they really helped um, let's see 
In a warm, humid environment, they repro reproduce quickly. For crops grown under protection of warmer environments, uh, can be used nighttime temperatures where they drop below. Or, yeah, so when it starts drop, dropping below 60 degrees, uh, they're not going to be as work as well. But uh, the other one, uh, besides the Saworskis, were, um, and I haven't ordered them yet, uh, were the Cumarius. And these were um, supposed to be just as well at fighting, especially um, thrips, different mites. Um, they, they say they're slow to establish compared to the Swirskis, and that's kind of why I go with the Swirskis. Uh, these take four to eight we weeks to really get established in your beds or your soil. And keep in mind, you're going to have to have kind of like a a mulch crop, something that they can kind of hide and run under. Um, people that use SIP containers they have that plastic container over the top sometimes. So when you peel that back, you'll really see them active. But if you have mulch or fibrous mulch and you kind of roll it back, or some type of leafy material, you'll kind of see them running around. I know the first time I put them in my bed, I was seeing them run all over the pots. I was seeing them all over the edges of the beds, running up on the plants. Like, what did I order last time? I think a 50,000. This time I did a 100,000. Um, I'm not trying to play around with any threats. Even though I haven't seen many, I'm seeing signs of them, so I've got to hit them up and get them. Uh, but anyhow, so uh, the Cumarius, they actually go after two spotted mites, which are more of your spider mites that you're dealing with. Um, where did that go? Uh, they actually go after broad mites and immature thrips. So, uh, they're highly compatible with rove beetles and pirate bugs for th thrip controls. And often combined with Andersoni for mite control. So, they use, and that's where people need to understand, when you're fighting different pests and bugs in your gardens using a combination and not just one I know I think I spent like $124 on just two items one of them they charge me for shipping because they have to ship it at a different time because the only time they ship out like predator mites is on a Tuesday and it's a separate shipment um, what's going on small tubes Yes, well, nematodes also can go after the bacteria and fungi and help part of the soil food web. So adding them in will always be a benefit. You just don't want the root not feeding nematodes, and there's a couple other type of nematodes that are not beneficial. Um, but most of the conditions for the uh, cumarius Oh shit. So here's something I'm glad I'm reading it. Um, <clears throat> do not use the Saworskis with the Cumarius. They must go after each other. That's interesting. When thrift populations are released and easy can be done with blue or yellow moisture. However, do not use with Saworskis. They must go after each other. So it's pretty interesting to see different predator mites go after other predator mites. I guess it's uh, survival of the fittest, people. Earth in your indoor thrips. Smoking plants. It's kind of hard to do that, though, in the no-till. Like, I'd have to completely cover every plant, and that's not going to work. Nailed it outdoors. <laughs> no, that's of the, uh, that thumbnail picture that you have, that's actually of the, uh, 
Lemon Fighter number two, Fino. So, I guess when you're trying to use different types, because it says what you can uh, combine with the Andersonian, Anderson E, it's an I at the end, for mite control. So, you can combine certain mites together and some they say not to do. Um, let's see. Here's the uh, Anderson E. Let's see what they say. These are great for broad mites, two spider mites, two spotted mites, and russet mites. They take, uh, provides up to only six weeks of control. So if you're dealing with it longer than six weeks, you may have to order more. So maybe that's why um, they will also feed on thrips, pollen, and honeydew. So right there are three different types of predator mites that we're looking that will fight thrips. Uh, two of them, well, these two, to really fight more the spider mite, russet mites, broad mites, with the cumarius and these andersoni. Um, what do they say? This product controls. Uh huh. It says, yeah. Or minute pirate bugs, so you can use these with pirate bugs. Um, They're active down to 42 degrees. So if you're in a cooler temperature, these work down to 42 degrees, which a lot of them are, once you start hitting below 60 degrees, you're having issues with them not being so active. So this is gonna make a difference uh, temperature-wise when you're still fighting certain pests. And that's why like, I, I really wish that these greenhouses and nurseries and places that you're getting clones. They would use some of these to help fight pests that they're passing on, especially when they're in the soil and you're taking it home. And then you think you're you did a control and put them in an area to contain them, and that quite didn't happen. Or you brought them in somehow from outdoors into your room. Um, so, let's see, what else they have? They've got even beetles, um, different types of beetles that if you're looking for, that consume spider mites on cucumbers and pepper plants. Um, those almost look like, what? okay. So, yeah. Several different types of pest bugs that uh, you can fight with just a couple different nematodes and predator mites. I put in a parameter around my pot. Yeah, so my no-till bed, I'll spray the sides, I'll spray the floor with neem oil. Uh, to treat everything, to kind of get it coated so they can't reproduce and they kind of suffocate some. The bed, though, I'll use Bavaria bassiana, uh, a fungus. I'll use these predator mites. I'll use nematodes. Um, like I said, I'm trying to get away from using IPM. So I'm tired of kind of spraying my plants and being in the no-till bed I'm trying to use the phytosphere, spraying stuff on the leaf surface, um, which I think that that's another topic about how some of my seeds do come about, because you have to watch some of the products you're using to spray, but that's another topic. Um, what's going on, Smokey Steve? And so, really looking at... Um, I, most of my place is Arbico, A-R-B-I-C-O, 
uh, company is the company that I really order a lot of my pest control through. Um, my nematodes, I ordered them Sunday. They were received today by like 1 o'clock this afternoon. Um, today, my order of my predator mites should go out, so I should either receive them tomorrow or Thursday, depending on when they're shipped, and I'll have to check the shipping on that. But usually, all my products that I get from them, um, they ship in a ice freezer bag too. So let me grab that because it's been in the fridge since we're dealing with 100 degree heat right now. But uh, I'll be right back. Okay, got our package. Live beneficial insects refrigerated upon arrival. Because several times the ice bag package that it comes in, it's one of them like you put it on your body for eggs and beans type ice pack. Comes with instructions and then my package which is a reflective bubble wrap material sealed and then there's my freezy pack gel that's it's cool only because it's been in the fridge but this is the package oh, shit. that the nematodes come in. And then I just add this to water and we water it in. And like I said, it only took it a couple days or ordered it Sunday. It got here Tuesday because Monday they had to process it. And usually it's a two day package when you. Uh, purchase it so if you guys are having problems and you're looking for different pest methods um, I would suggest looking at the website um, uh, not that they uh, I have any sponsorship with them but I do like their product and I found uh, for everything that they ship it's reasonable. No, oh. no, that's not what I want. Hang on, I'm trying to pull up the website. So, want to share the website? It just taking forever to load, probably because I'm doing live. Okay, here we go. All right, so <clears throat> that's the link to the website. That's the one I actually will order products from. Check them out if you guys are dealing with anything like I am right now. And I know, like I said, it's that time of season, and a lot of us are starting to deal with these different types of pests in the gardens, outdoor, indoor, from gnats to thrips to caterpillars to slugs to spider mites. Um, another person, you know, if you don't follow him, uh, I recommend uh, for great information is Matthew Gates, Sink Angel. Um, Susan the bug lady she's another one uh, they both kind of give out the information a little differently but uh, great for understanding which ones work 
and how they kind of work. Um, but on to our next topic, which is whatever the fuck we want it to be, because I really didn't have a topic. I just wanted to bullshit a little bit, hang out, talk about what's going on. A couple different ones I'll recommend people look into if they're having problems. Website, go check out. Don't use neem oil. I still use neem oil. I use it all around the base of my plants, on the side of my pots. Because neem will suffocate a lot of the pests, not allow them to reproduce, cause them to not want to eat. So there's a lot of benefits to neem. What's going on, Elky Grower? <laughs> Yes, aphids. So there's a lot of good predator mites to fight aphids too. Aphids. Man, that's what I hate about watching a lot of my mint plants used to grow. I used to get quite a bit of aphids that try to attack them uh, when they first started coming up. Um, outdoor plants, I'd always find different issues. And... You guys got to be careful when you're outdoor in your gardens and not to bring it into your indoor gardens. That's why changing your clothes, taking a shower, rinsing your body off, um, not having the same shoes uh, to go into your grow rooms. Because a lot of people try to understand where a lot of these pests are coming from. Listen, I can go to a grow store. And I can walk around in the grow store looking at different products, go back to my garden, and all of a sudden, guess what? I just transferred a bunch of different pests into my garden because somebody at the grow store had russet mites, spider mites, thrips, um, something else that now it, it landed on me, and now I took it into my garden. And it's that easy. It could come in bag soils that you buy from some of these uh, hydro stores. Um, I'm pretty sure you're going to find some issues. And that's where you try to stay as clean as you can. I know there's times that I've gone over to friends' houses that are having problems. And they're like, yo, listen, I'm having problems. When you go home, don't go in your garden. And so I literally will go home, strip my clothes off, take a shower, get clean clothes before I do anything in my garden because I don't want to take any other pest in my garden. But I've talked about it also, these garden nurseries where you go buy different companion plants. These places are just as bad. If you're going to buy house plants, they have the same issues, different thrips, different pest predator mites that are attacking them that you're bringing into your home that's getting into your garden. So be very aware of this when you are purchasing these products that I know I have a tent right here that I try to use as a containment and treat everything before it goes on to a bigger room. But whatever gets out of that tent onto the floor, I can get into the house or it can get into the house plants. So that's why I'm treating all of the plants this time. Uh, BT, no, I haven't got to use uh, BT yet. Um, not that I haven't looked into it. I'm just working with these other products. Um, when I run out of my BB Bavaria Bassiana, I'll probably look at the BT, move over to it. Crop Defender, mm, no, I haven't heard of it. Using them, I can't wait to use this image. So, the neem that you used was it actually neem meal, neem seed. What did? You, how did you use it? Shoes definitely. Well, another problem people forget your pets. Your dogs, your cats bring in pests into your homes. 
Most of the time, that's why it was always recommended to keep them out of the grow rooms. But people let their dogs outside to go to the bathroom and then come inside, and sometimes they'll go into the grow rooms. Cats are the same way. So we've all been kind of guilty of it, one form or another, of bringing stuff into our grow rooms. But uh, I know what time it is. It's about that time to load another bowl. So, uh, yeah. Pest, good point. Yeah, that's one thing that I remember a long time ago is that I was taught is watch my animals coming into my grow rooms. Like... I know many years ago you used to watch like um, NV Closet Mag Grower let Dookie for all of you that remember Dookie. It was his little Yorkie that he had that would kind of come in his grow room. Just real simple like that. Dookie goes outside to go to the bathroom. Even though you don't think these mites or aphids or different bugs are attaching to the dog, they do. And then you bring it in. He'll be driving through Pablo, Pablo, the 29th. Um, yeah, we'll talk more, Okay. But that's kind of a thing. Like, people forget how simple their, their animals bring them into the house. So it doesn't have to even be the grow room. It could be just your house, and then you're walking through your house. So it's a shit show storm that we're dealing with. Yeah, Mr. Big Dookie, uh, having animals that we forget that will bring in different pests and problems for our growth, our plants, even our house pet, or our house plants. So, cheers, everybody. Smoking on some. This is, I think, some Mac One mixed with some of the Primo. Now, temperature wise, <coughs> if you're trying to use some of these predator bugs, in a high temperatures, such as 103 degrees, yesterday was 105 here in Pueblo. Record, tied the record high. Um, I don't know how well a lot of these will work outdoors in heat like this. And so that's where I've made the comments of having some type of Uh, mulch, some type of layer on top of the soil, something covering it that they can hide under and get away and try to cool. Cookies crop, what's going on? 110. Mm. See, so this temperature, Pueblo, Colorado is nice because it's a dry heat. We've had monsoonal moisture, so it's bringing in moisture. We're getting rain, so it's increased the moisture. Um, I think the dew point today earlier was in the 40s, which usually I'm used to being anywhere from 60 to, to 80 in the Midwest, uh, this heat. So as long as you're out of the sun, this 100 degree weather, if I'm in the shade and there's a breeze, it's not bad. I can sit outside and be okay. But in the direct sun, uh, it's it's too much. It's unbearable. You're looking for shade because you feel like you're being cooked from the inside. It's just so unbearable beating down on you at times. Nice. Lime pie. But temperature-wise, that's where maybe you need to do some types of IPM because it's getting too warm outdoors um, I haven't had to deal with this or actually know and found some of the information yet on the temperatures uh, that these 
predator bugs are going to survive in because I see we're 60s to 80s and then that's where it says the best conditions are. Anything over that? Oh shit. Is the heat just killing them? I mean, how do they survive in that shit naturally? Is that where, like I said, the cover ground, the, the mulch, the uh, cover crop so they can hide in and stay cool where it keeps the ground moist, you know, or Colorado Springs, Wisconsin is humid state. Yeah. Yep. Colorado Springs still has a little bit more moisture. It doesn't get as hot as what Pueblo does, but. So. <clears throat> Getting back to some of these applications, um, I'm going to release the water in my nematodes, all the pots in the house, my predator mites when they come. Um, I'll probably try to dump some on the plants. I'll put them in the soil. Um, the pots that are in the small deal up here. I know the 10 gallon pots have plenty of area for them to hide and run around in so I should be okay but it's the clones that I've been having in there trying to get established um, some of the other plants the tomato plant I cut out the pepper plants not unhealthy because they've all been being attacked and so that's the kind of nice thing about other companion plants and keeping other cover crops they're definitely a telltale sign of when you're starting to have pest pressures um according to john kemp as long as my plants healthy high bricks then i shouldn't be getting attacked but matthew gates says differently and i seem to see i know i'm feeding the shit out of my no-till bed high sugar content um brown rice organic syrup uh, organic coconut sugar, brown sugar, a little bit of honey, um, molasses. So <clears throat> that's, I'm still having press, pest pressures with the clover because it looks like the clover's been heavily attacked. It looks like almost like a leaf miner but I don't have leaf miners because I would see telltale signs on other plants but it's definitely having some issues so uh, what was the other topic um, what else is going on I'm trying to think what else I've uh, been using uh, spinosad something else that I can use it's another organic control but it's more of an IPM even though it's um, two types of bacteria spinosad it's a bacteria fungi god I don't remember um, but spinosad is another Captain Jack it's another great product to kind of use for pest control but to me I can do IPM all day long if I'm not getting stuff in my soil to attack what's going on in my soil because uh, it's, it's like that's where the larvae like to go they like to go in the soil and then climb up and then they get into your plant and they feed and that's where you'll find some of it on the, the leaves and why why you're trying to treat both areas um, because if you're not treating the soil, you're still going to have the same problems. If I'm just putting predator mites in my beds and my pots, yes, they'll attack. But I'm still going to have them coming up from the soil. The predator mites will go into the top of the soil to attack some of them. But the nematodes get a little further down. And they really go after some of the eggs and larvae and... So it's, it's like a one-two punch. If you're not doing two different types of methods to attack some of the, the pest problems you're having in your gardens, it's almost a waste. Um, I know before when I was doing IPMs, uh, when I would fight spider mites, 
uh, and I didn't use pest or predator bugs. Um, I would do Azimax, which was a neem oil um, and a couple other things. Um, I would mix that up and then I would do like a lemon juice and I would rotate every two to three days something different. And usually within a week and a half, two weeks, I always had spider mites gone. So I've noticed that it's weird because it seems like some pests become acclimated to what you're applying and trying to use to get rid of them with. And so using two different, three different things to kind of treat and prevent really seem to work the best. I know, like I said, when I was trying to treat the gnat issue and I kept, they just, I didn't seem like I was defeating them using the Bavaria Bassiana and using, what was it, Simple Green, no, not Simple Green, um, gosh, it's an essential oil product, I can't remember the name of it, I planet something i i ended up giving it the whole bottle away it ju i just didn't think that it worked um but really doing more than one type of treatment seems to help knock shit down way faster and rotating it every few days and not like the same thing uh seems to work that's why today i'm gonna go in um, when the lights come on, we're going to water uh, in the nematodes into the rooms, the pots. We're going to then, when the order of spider mites come within the next day or two, because uh, they should be getting shipped, then we're going to treat the room with the spider mites as well. And there's kind of the one-two knockout. Um, I did Oki Grower, cover your ears, okay, real quick. I did spray the cover crop and everything with neem oil just to help knock everything down if I'm having pests. So, yeah, I did treat everything. Um, and it, I, if I had any predator mites still around, I could have possibly knocked them back as well. That's kind of why I'm doing a re-inoculation, re-treating the room with these Swirskis and these nematodes. The neem oil is always a great thing to knock things down. Didn't spray it on the plants because they're in flower, but I did spray it on the cover crop because it needed to be knocked down. So, you know, sometimes you guys have to do certain things, like, especially when you think, I don't know how bad because I I've seen like I said the telltale signs but I'm not flipping everything over looking on the leaf surface I'm not seeing it with the naked eye but I know that I'm having issues so gotta hit them hit them quick get a hit hit them hard and so if I gotta kill some of my predator mites I gotta make that sacrifice because I've got new mites on order and I didn't just order 50,000, I believe I ordered 100,000. So, we should be good. Plus the same thing on the nematodes. I think I ordered 100,000 nematodes to treat a 3,200 square foot area. Tons of safe alternatives. Yeah, they keep saying that about uh, these essential oils. You know, that's kind of why I use, try to use some of these uh, companion plants. But I know the marigolds are not doing well in that bed. So I'm assuming that I'm not getting enough light down to them. Um, the, yar the yarrow, it's doing okay, but it needs to have more light. And the light's at 75%. I could raise it up if I need to, but it's almost like I need side lighting. Help the cover crop get a little bit... And I've done some leaf stripping to help some light penetration, and it's still just, it doesn't seem like it's enough sometimes. But when you see how big these just four plants are in that nilto bed, yeah, 
and that's we're just over 20 some days in the flower and man they're beasting they're beasting JS is just as effective, so is JHS. Uh, so, cover crop, it's probably going to be time to get some new seed going. Um, most of it's died back pretty heavily. Uh, I think some of it's most of the hairy vetch has died off finally, and it's taken a lot for that thing to die off. Um, so we may have to get, I've got some more seed, we may have to retreat, but I'll tell you what, the biomass in there from the um, clover and the buckwheat and the hairy vetch, on top of the fibrous uh, mulch that I have in there, I've got a pretty good layer going so far. Um, do need to be concerned about also, and I was going to bring this up earlier, when you're bringing in materials from outdoors for different IPMs, or not IPMs, uh, IMOs, when you're trying to take a piece of wood that's got some mycelium on it, and you're trying to put that in something sometimes you have to watch out for those to also have bad pathogens with them that can affect your room or whatever you're putting the material in so be aware of this as well it, it sucks because we want to do so much to try to mimic mother nature but at the same time we need to also understand what's happening in the environment around us. Uh, if we're bringing in stuff outdoors and trying to add it into our pots to help build our soils, we can be bringing in bad pathogens. So be concerned about that. Not overly concerned, but be aware. At least, you know, trying to bring it to your attention that it can happen. So say one day you thought everything was going good, you bring in... Um, some material outside that you're just gonna kind of throw in your bed and within a couple weeks all of a sudden your one of your plants look kind of unhealthy and sick and yeah mother nature doesn't spray neem oils no but she does make a neem plant um, but so you're trying to trace it back to what's going on with the plant and you kind of forgot that you picked up some material and you threw it in trying to help, you know, like break some stuff down or add your carbon ratios or, you know, trying to get some IMOs from local. And so kind of be aware that you still can cause problems trying to add this stuff into your rooms. That's why... I try to talk about ways to treat it, and that's what this was about, was trying to talk about different um, types of uh, controls, pest controls that we can use in our gardens as home gardeners, home cultivators. Um, since, you know, most of us aren't doing large facilities, most of us are doing couple tents or a room and we're trying to understand where some of this stuff is coming from and why we're having issues in these areas well eliminate walk everything back in your mind start eliminating things did I change my clothes did my dog my cat come in the room did I bring in something from a nursery or garden or from a grow center where did this appear it it takes a while to start figuring it out but when you start to see that you're having these pressures and that's a good thing about companion plants they kind of should let you see that you're having these issues beforehand before they get to your other plants um, 
Now it's how do you treat it? How do you manage it? The SF nematodes that we talked about in the beginning of the show work on almost every issue that we have. Thrips, gnats, different mites, worm or um, caterpillars like grub worms. Then you have different types of predator mites like Swirsky and Cumarius, um, if I'm saying it right, that actually will go after two spotted mites, russet mites, broad mites. And that's what we're looking to do is save our gardens, save our flowers so they're not being destroyed by these path, path and pathogens. But then we got to start looking at what's going on in our garden and why are we getting them. Are your plants having deficiencies? Are they sick? Or did we just, they get brought in and, you know, they're attacking other plants, but they're not attacking our cannabis plants? Oh, well, that might be a telltale sign, too, that something's sick in the garden and you're having issues. So be aware. Be aware, people. Large pox diversity for the win. Yes. But when you're doing monoculture, just a single cannabis plant, no cover crop, no companion plants. I've heard HP nematodes can actually help add nutrients to the soil. Well, I believe that nematodes does, some don't just go after larvae. They go still after some of the bacteria and fungus. They help still break down some of um, their natural kind of being like bacteria and fungus are kind of like natural just for them to feed on. So I'm sure some of these species that are predators will look more for the carnivorous type of different larvae eggs versus some of these that are um, herbivorous where they eat more of the organic material like bacteria and fungi so adding more bugs to combat bugs seems silly to me it might be silly but if these bugs attack control these pests from attacking your plants and these pet predator bugs don't cause harm to your plants like the pests do then wouldn't that seem more beneficial to use those than spraying neem oil hmm okay grower hmm wouldn't it seem a little bit better to do yes yes it would bug poop listen I'm sure at some point you've eaten bug shit. I'm sure at some point you've eaten a bug and it had shit in it. So you, that's how you've eaten some bug shit. You know, most people, if you haven't read um, how many spiders we actually eat in our lifetime sleeping, look it up. Not counting how many bugs fly in your mouth when you're outdoors trying to eat. Just saying. But, gosh, we got just a minute left in the show. So I hope the information has kind of helped everybody out. Uh, the website that we shared, I hope that you guys, if you have any issues, you guys can at least find a place to go find them. Um, yes, it may cost a little money, but they seem to help um, get everything under control. So, we'll finish this bowl off. Cheers, everybody. You know what we do about this time. Give a thumbs up. Leave them comments down below. Hit the little red button over here, over here. Turn it white. Be a part of the 21,000 subscribers supporting the channels. So, you guys, once again, 
thanks for stopping by, checking out on talking about different types of pest control using nematodes and different types of predator mites. So, you guys, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. Peace!